All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to, I guess you could call it the second season of Pickleball Studio. We only took a month off, but we are. It feels like forever. Dude, a month is kind of an eternity in Pickleball. I feel like so much happened since we've been gone. It's actually ridiculous. I know, but we back, boys. We back. Ladies and gentlemen, did y'all miss us? Because we missed you, and I missed you, too. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, I missed you a little bit. I missed oh, you a little, a little bit. bit. Okay, no, he's live. It depends. It depends if your camera's in focus this time or not. Okay, it's in focus. <laughs> I found the setting that messed it up. And right now I have I have the eyeball tracking me now. I can see the square. You see, it's it's working. Right I'm just now. I'm letting all of you know right now. <laughs> if Will has one episode this year that's out of focus, a single episode, uh huh. He's getting he's getting replaced by Ed Jew. By Ed? Okay, he's, look, yep. first of all, first of all, shout outs to Ed. He's been killing it with the content. He probably should, he would actually be a pretty good replacement for me, but... Well, you know it. why I have to pick him, right? Why? From one Selkirk shill to another. It's the only way this... <laughs> this... <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. I love you, Ed. You're great. Uh, yeah, that's so funny. Shout out okay. to Ed. Dude, this is going to be a long episode. We're probably we're definitely not covering everything that happened in the time that we've been gone, but we do want to talk mm-hmm. about quite a bit of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> is there anything you want to start with before I dive into a bunch of my stuff? Because I've got I, stories. Okay. I think the first thing I want to do is give a shout out while we were gone to all the content creators out there that have just you know been picking it up. First of all, Ed. John Q started a podcast. Go check that out. Braden yep. started a podcast with um, Porter, which is awesome. And everybody's just been stepping up their game and doing stuff for the community. I love to see it. I mean, like, sorry, not sorry. Pickleball. Uh, Caitlin, I think I saw a story. She's going to Mumbai to, I guess, be the the hype the hype woman over there, like the MC. That's really cool to see. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's like all love. Everybody is just, you know, getting better. And uh, shoot, man, uh, we appreciate it. I love seeing it. And uh, yeah, all love. Yeah, no, it's good. I honestly, I pretty much tried to stay off YouTube. I watched a handful of pickleball videos while I was gone, but I mostly just like I knew John made a podcast and a couple other random things. But I was like, <laughs> I need to I need to totally disconnect, which was definitely weird because YouTube would just keep popping stuff up like, hey, mm-hmm. this person uploaded this video. And I was like, don't do it. Don't just ignore it. Don't watch it. You don't have to watch that. <laughs> yeah. You were scratching your neck like, you know, a crack addict. Oh, my God, I need this. I need to see what everybody else is doing. Well, so, OK, for anyone, I'm sure most of you know at this point, but I took the entire month off. Mm -hmm. from January. I made no content. Uh, I worked on small things here and there. Like I kind of revamped my office. You guys can probably see it looks a little bit different uh, watching it on the podcast. It wasn't entirely nothing, but largely the goal was to not work. And I will say the first probably week, I was like, what do I do? I was like, all I know is doing lots of work. (laughs) So like waking up and being like, oh, I don't have to do anything. And then I was like, oh, I could like go play a video game. It's like I could go to the gym. I was like, I could just play pickleball for playing pickleball. But I, the first few days, I was like, dude, this feels wrong. I was like, this does not <laughs> feel right. It was really, really weird. Okay, next time you hang out with me, I'll I'll show you the art of doing nothing. Okay, <laughs> when it comes to doing nothing, I'm my name might as well be you know Ben Johns, Jaime, <laughs> Martinez, Vic. You know, I'm a pro level player when it comes to doing nothing. So I'll show you the ways. It's it's really not that hard. I got you got you. a six out duper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know though. With the way you're talking about it, you might be three point five at best at doing nothing and relaxing. So I don't know. Oh, you're always I, fidgeting. <laughs> that might be generous. I might be less than that. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> so we'll we'll skip over like my first half of the month of the break because a lot of it was you know just playing pickleball kind of taking it easy stuff that's not that interesting but i did take a trip to hawaii that i want to talk about this was just purely for vacation sarah and i haven't taken like a true vacation since our honeymoon which was four years ago every other trip we've taken there's always something work related in there so hawaii was like no work you're doing nothing it's just going to be a trip but People did tell me that there was going to be a pickleball tournament there. And I was like, okay, 
I, I gotta sign up. Actually, we rearranged our trip so that we could go to that tournament because it was <laughs> the flight was already booked. But anyways, I only signed up for singles because I was like, okay, we'll be in Hawaii for nine days. I don't want to play too much pickleball, so I'll only do singles, and then I don't have to figure out a men's doubles partner or whatever. Okay, so I get there. I play pickleball with mm -hmm. a bunch of people. Uh, shout out to everyone who hooked me up with games. I really appreciate it. Everyone in Hawaii, so nice. Like Which island were just you a, on? Uh, Maui. Maui, okay. Yeah, super, super nice people. Honestly, every single person I met was phenomenal. And... So I played a few days with some people. That was great. And then the day of the tournament, Saturday, uh, men's doubles. I wasn't going to be playing until Monday. I get a text. I'm, in, I'm swimming in a pool, and I just happen to have my watch on. I get a text uh -huh. that's like, hey, uh, so-and-so's partner got hurt, and they're oh, in no. four or five men's. Can you play? And I was like, oh, let's go. I was like, <laughs> we're in. We're in. Because here's what happened. You were summoned by the Avengers, and you're like, yes, <laughs> my people need me. No, literally, that's what it felt like because I was so. This sounds terrible. Okay, I didn't. I wasn't hoping that someone would get hurt. I was just hoping that someone would need a partner because after playing with people in Hawaii, mm -hmm. I really wanted to play men's doubles. Oh, so yeah. getting this text was like, oh, this must be a go. new feeling for you because you rarely get invited to anything. People <laughs> rarely need you, so I can see why you were so ecstatic about it. So that's awesome. exactly people in Hawaii. Thank you for making Chris's time well worth it over in Hawaii. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so I, I it, oh, also if I didn't say this, this was an hour before start time. So I literally got out of the an pool hour? when it got changed. Yes, an hour before start time. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> now, thankfully, we were like a ten minute walk from the venue from our uh, uh -huh. hotel, so that was great. So got ready, went over there, met my partner. I had played one, exactly one rec game with him mm -hmm. a couple days before. And how, and, how did you uh, do? How was it? Dude, it was great. We, let me think here. Let me make sure I get this right. I think we went, we either went undefeated in pool play. Mm -hmm. I think, hang on. I think, I, I can't remember. Either we went undefeated in pool play or we only lost one in pool play. And I think we played five or six um games they were all games to 15 and dude it it was great like my partner mike he's a little bit older he's like maybe in his 40s i think uh -huh. and just for basically never having met someone this was about as ideal of a partner as i could have had like this dude's energy level was like exactly like mine like no ego was not uh -huh. ever mad like both of us, like he was open to like suggestions. It was like truly my dream partner. Like if just very ideal. He was great. Um, hey, you had to marry so, this guy. Shoot, we Sarah. <laughs> hey, you know it's funny. He did buy the gearbox because of my review. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, there you go. You can give him another gearbox. You know, signed or something as you know <laughs> the engagement. You know, it was a replacement for the engagement ring or something. Oh. Got to tell this story. My what? first match there. Uh -huh. So we walk up and this guy sees me and he's like, Chris? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, dude, love the podcast. And then he looks at me again and he goes, dude, but I got to ask, why are you sandbagging in 4-5? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no one on earth, no one on earth has ever asked me if I've been sandbagging ever, <laughs> let alone in 4-5. Oh, man. Dang. All right. So what that, that sounds like is that. 2024 it's time for 5-0 chris to come out well i i think so because me and mike did end up going on to get gold at this tournament so that felt really good whoa wait so you got gold in singles and doubles yep yep four or five yep both that's of not them. a type of four four or five both of them the same you <laughs> chris olsen the three five Hold up. Who are you, bro? Like, hold <laughs> up. It's been a month. You must be an imposter. I'm leaving. You, you, you see what happens when I actually get to practice pickleball instead of just review paddles? I oh, actually yeah. I actually get decent at the game. Oh, okay. Pretty well, I mean, uh after watching that scorpion counter against your brother right to the nutsack, yeah, I can believe it. So yeah. Oh, we're definitely putting that in this video. Oh, if you guys editor, are watching put it in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Isaac. He has to watch this again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny but yeah it was it was a lot of fun really enjoyed it um i played with the 11 6 24 harache x which i'm sure 
unless you oh, follow yeah. me on like Instagram and Discord, none of you probably know who that brand is, and the name is awful. But it's a very good paddle, and I will be reviewing it. We'll probably talk a little bit yeah, more we'll talk about, about that more later. later. We have a whole section of bunch of, about a bunch of different paddles that we've been hitting, so stay tuned for that. Yes, um, but yeah. Also, shout out to Todd because he was like a super podcast fan. Like, dude, he knew everything. When he walked up, he was like, "Hey, did Mike bring you a muffin attached to a beef stick?" <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" Uh, I was like, "This guy knows the podcast." I was like, "This oh, is yeah. awesome." He, someone's got to just give you a bouquet made of beef sticks with muffins on top, and I feel like it's gonna to happen them. one day. <laughs> someone's doing it, but it ain't gonna mean to tell you that right now. Also, we have to talk about uh, the singles because I, so singles, I did go, no, singles is where I didn't go undefeated. So I won five out of my six pool play games, Mm -hmm. um, but the first guy I played, so you know how I'm a terrible line caller, right? But not that I (laughs) call bad line calls against my opponent. It's bad for me, right? Yeah. It's like you're a masochist. You just want to just, I don't know, make it hard for yourself. I don't know what it is. You like to torture yourself and torment yourself with your own guilt after the match. Are you ready for how much worse this one's about to be? This takes, oh, this yeah. is worse than any line call I've ever done against myself. Okay. I what start happened? my first game and mm-hmm. I go up 5-0 really fast. Okay. Side out happens and then like he gets a point, another side out. Anyways, he ends up getting the ball back. And instead of saying 1-5, he says 1-3. And I was- he Subtracted I think, two points. He, sur- he subtracted two points, and I was okay. like, wait, I don't think that's right. But I believe we had had a long point before that that, you know, like, winded us a little bit. So I was like, I was like, dang, I, like, I, I'm almost positive I have five, but this has happened so quick that I wasn't sure. So I was like, okay, I guess we're just going to go with it. Then I get like, <laughs> I, I believe if I'm, I have this on video, so I can go back and check. But I think I got two more points or one more point. And he subtracted one again, and I still went with it. <clears throat> the math ain't math, and come on, <laughs> like, what are you like? I know you have bad line calls, but come on, I know you can count. I mean, <laughs> Dude, I, it- I thought I was bad with keeping track of score, but for you to let go of two, three whole points, it sounds three like three points, three points. And the second time was bad because I knew that time what I had, but I was so worried about like getting in an argument that i was like it's fine like i'll just i'll let it go pickleball studio math shoot (laughs) (laughs) i don't even know what to tell you numbers just don't make sense for you literally as this match was happening all i could think was dang it i was like that's a story for the pod i was like this is so bad (laughs) oh okay but i mean did you so you won i mean obviously you won that because you won four or five gold so what happened so it's funny I played him in the first Uh round, and then, you know, after pool play, um, he was really good. He was actually, besides the person that beat me in pool play, he was my closest match. And uh, we ended up seeing each other again in the finals, and this time I was like, no, 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 we're not. (laughs) We're keeping track of the score properly this time, (laughs) which is funny because in the final, we played three games. I win the first game, being down like 1-8 or 2-8. I don't know. Somehow I won that one. Second one, I accidentally cheated myself into a point. <laughs> we had a good point, and it was supposed to be like 3-4 or something, mm-hmm. but I just walked to the even We both walked to the even side, and I was like, 4-4, four, four, and then we played it out. And I <laughs> like as I was editing the video, I was like, wait, I skipped a point. I was like, I go back, and I'm like, wait, no, I just counted wrong. <laughs> Dang, now that's so the only way you can get gold now is by cheating. Hey, but he won that game, and I'm so glad he won that game because as I was editing this, I was like, if that was the third game, I would have felt so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Also, real quick, third game, I am down Mm -hmm. 5'10", and I'm like, whatever. I was like, this is over. 5'10". 5'10". I call a timeout just out of principle. I didn't even want to take the timeout, but I was like, whatever. I was like, I have it. I'll use it. I immediately rifle off five. I get the side out five straight points to get to 10. And then we had, you know, we went back and forth for a while. And then 14, 12, I win. Dang. Yo, you see, remember that one time I asked you what's better if you're down 7-1 and you have the momentum carrying you or if you're up 7-1. And you see, yo, the comeback momentum is a thing. 
It's true. It's true. And you know, it's funny, actually. I think every game, I'll post this match eventually. I have it edited. But I believe all three games I started down by like noticeable margins. Like I think in the second game, I was down 07 or 06, came back and lost like 6 11 or 7 11 or something. So apparently, I just like starting down is my thing, I guess. Okay. Come back, King. Come back, King. Come back, That's King. What I'd like to see. All right, so, yeah. Sick. Tournament Hawaii was fantastic. Again, love all the people out there. Thanks to everyone who came and said hi. And honestly, this trip was a really, really good reminder for me about what I actually like in pickleball, which is meeting the people and like having a fun time. Like so many of the people I played rec with, like Mm -hmm. immediately hit it off. Like it, it was just great. So it really reminded me like moving forward one to just one thing I want to prioritize is meeting more people like in different cities and like, you know, just having a good time. And like, I don't know. It just, it was a good reminder that the people are why I really like pickleball. The sport is of course amazing. Yes. But like, I need to keep meeting people because that's what makes it so fun for me. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. We're going to touch back on that a little bit later when I relay my stories of when I went to the Philippines and Taiwan, but yes, totally agree with you right there. It's about the people. It was, it's what makes pickleball fun and still fun and the most fun in my opinion. Yeah. So, nope, yeah, totally completely agree. agree. But uh, last thing before we get into your Taiwan stuff, um, just to kind of wrap up my break, I feel way better now. Um, I think I maybe talked about it a little bit in other places, but the reason I took the whole month off is I was just getting really burnt out at the end of the year. Like, I think I just did too much too fast last year. Like, trying to keep up with every single paddle release mm-hmm. was just not, it's not sustainable long term. And yeah. I realized if I didn't take a break, I was probably just going to start having a really bad time. But now I feel great. It was good to reset, play pickleball for the sake of playing pickleball. Got to take a lesson, which I'll have a video about. That was extremely helpful and kind of eye-opening. And just got to kind of rework what my priorities were for 2024. So for all of you out there, I think this also applies to your own pickleball game. I think pickleball players are such addicts that we just go, 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 you know, play seven days a week, do that all the time. And it can be frustrating when you're not making progress. Honestly, if you just start adding in some mandatory breaks, like I really did not want to take a month off. I talk about talked about this in my newsletter, but like it was actually very scary to take a month off. Like, you know, what if something big happens? What if like income drops? All these different things. But mm-hmm. I'm now realizing like breaks need to be like a necessity. And moving forward, I'm going to take more of them. Not a month, but you should take breaks. You need them. Until and you'll be better next for January. it. January. Until next January. We'll have to do a little trip to like Hawaii together when we can play. That'd Dude, that cool. would be sick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anything else yep. uh did you want to cover for your trip? No, I think that's uh most of it. Honestly, I probably am forgetting some good stories, but now it's been like two weeks and I'm just can't remember anything. <laughs> yeah, no, all good, all good. All right. Well, I'll go into quickly about some of my adventures. Uh I took i mean i took essentially a month off as well i did do a few edits i did release a few videos uh while i was gone but i went to the philippines for a friend of mine's wedding i was planning on playing some pickleball but ended up not it was just i was just busy doing other things and just enjoying my time away from the game i guess you could say uh but yo the philippines was awesome i'm definitely gonna go back there and i do i do want to check out the pickleball scene there but while I was there, I was like, man, I'm on this side of the world. Let's go check out a country I haven't been to before, and let's have it kind of a little bit more pickleball focused. So I went to Taiwan. And first, I want to give a shout out to Danny. Uh, he reached out to me on social media. We connected, and he showed me around Taiwan. Uh, we got some games in. He took like two days off from work just to like show me around, get me games in. So big shout outs to Danny. Legend. Yeah, absolute uh, legend. So <clears throat> he got me in some rec games, and uh, bro. So you know, like in Taiwan, they like table tennis is big. Tennis is pretty big, and badminton is huge. So we went to like all the public pickleball courts. There are essentially badminton courts because it's the same dimensions, and they just lower the net like down. Okay, and the thing is, is that the poles for badminton is like really close to the line. So I was like, when I saw this, I was like, dude. It's going to be ATP City over here, dude. ATPs oh. are going to be the easiest thing, okay? But much to my surprise, I had no ATP opportunities. And you know why? 
it's because it's freaking speed up city over there. Like really? nobody nobody dinks over there. And it's 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 the reason why is because the badminton nets are kind of flimsy. They're kind of like tep nets, but I feel like they're a little more flimsy. So you're incentivized to just drive it and speed it up because the balls will flip over the net. And everybody there has fast hands. Everybody plays table tennis. And also, yo, do not lob anybody in Taiwan. Mm. Do not. They all play like everybody is, I don't know, decent to high level badminton players. I cannot tell you how many, like, even if it's a good lob and you know it's going to land on the line, you're like over here, like you'll run back, you'll maybe, you know, spin around, do a De La Rosa, like smash forward, but you let it bounce or whatever, or maybe you'll kind of drop it back and work your way back. No, over there, yeah. it does not matter if that ball is going out. They are jumping for that thing, right? And they're like essentially scorpion, scorpioning in the air and they're hitting the most absurd angles and th- those overheads are disgusting. I was like, yep, I'm never lobbing over here ever again but yeah i got into one maybe two dink battles and uh there's this other guy there he's actually from missouri but he works in taiwan he goes by the name of ren shout out to ren and he was shouting out to me he's like will i got into like a 15 like point dink rally he's like will that has to be the taiwanese like record in taiwan for dink <laughs> for dink <here." laughs> <laughs> yes. everything is just drive speed up it's like maybe one shot and then it's a speed up but you know they're going after me and i was like guys I was just hitting these back. I was like, you can't do this to me. I've seen this movie before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I stayed for the end credits. Shoot, I directed the prequel. All right. You can't do this to me. All right. Although I did get bagged like just a few times because those hands were so fast. Like, what, you know, what was the like average <clears throat> skill level that you played? Like, were you the highest level player there? Uh, for the most part, yes. There are some really good like very talented high level tennis players that I got a chance to play with, but they're not taking pickleball that seriously. And I feel like all the ones that are like really, um, you know, into pickleball, some of them have moved here. I know um, our good buddy Jeff Lee has played uh, and trained with some of them down in Texas. And oh my gosh, I'm forgetting her name now, but she played with um, Jeannie Bouchard uh, Mm. at the Masters PPA. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad right now. But she's from Taiwan and she's very okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, but everybody else is kind of just like, they're not sure. They're kind of like playing for fun. But I did get a chance to play with, um, uh, he goes by Akon. Akon Su. And for those of you who don't know, he is the younger brother from, um, of a very famous women's tennis player, uh, Se Su Wei. She's like she's won multiple like championships. I think she's ranked maybe like definitely like t- I think she's in the top like thirty. And okay. if, she, if if she played pickleball, she'd be disgusting. Like her tennis game is very like unorthodox. There's like she drops it, slices it, ah. and very pickleball esque. If you ever go and highlight like look up her highlights. But anyways, I played him in singles. He's kind of like injury retired, but that was really fun playing against him. Um and I would say the average like level I would say it's like four oh, but they have some four five plus drives and speed ups. You know, that's okay. kinda how I would describe it. It's it's very I don't know it it's different like from here, right? Because I would say they're like the four fives, considered four five bangers, like here maybe like yeah. two years ago. And that's that's the feeling that you get there. When you're there, um, it felt like what pickleball was here like two to three years ago. It's new, you know, people are asking about it and stuff. You see new people getting into the game, you see kids getting into the game, and people are very like there, there's a lot of camaraderie. Oh yo, you'll get this, get this. Okay. You know what they call pickleball in Taiwan? What? It's called Pika Chow. I hope I'm saying that right. Pika Chow. That, that's the, the whole thing? Like, that's including ball in that? Yeah, yeah. Chow, chow is ball. <laughs> uh, my Chinese is really off, but what does that sound like to you? It sounds like Pikachu. <laughs> exactly. It sounds like Pikachu. Could you imagine? You're there, you're playing pickleball or whatever, and some people walk by like, hey, what is this? What's this game? And then you're like, Pika Chow. And then, you know, he, the guy like turns his, his cat backwards, right? He tosses a ball <laughs> at you, and like a Charmander pops like, Charmander, you know? And you're like, whoa. <laughs> Calm down, Ash Ketchum. I came here to hit some pickleballs over a net, not to get into That's a battle so with you. That's so funny. Yeah. Wait, hang on. Did anyone speak English? Yeah, yeah. Danny spoke a little English. Uh, some some people spoke 
a little bit of English. I mean, they, how did they you do the games. score? They they did the score in English, like, at least for oh, me. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. at least for me, they did. Yeah, they know enough English, you know, or I would have had to. I mean, I would have learned, you know, one through ten in Chinese if I had to. It wouldn't yeah, have been too bad. I would hit you up. You know, you would you could have told they, me, right? They, I definitely could not have told you. <laughs> Put me on with your sister. Your sister knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my Chinese. sister could tell you. Okay. She could for sure tell you. All right, look. So in Taiwan, I am Pikachu Will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, 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 listen. Imagine, imagine, okay? Imagine you and I go to Taiwan together, right? And we go play, okay? I dress up in a Pikachu costume, okay? You can be Chris Ketchum, you know? You, know, you wear the red hat and everything. You're like, Pikachu Will, go! And then you're oh like, you speed up. Goodness. It's super you effective. Speed up. <laughs> it's super effective. Use, use top spin dink. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, so funny yeah 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 i mean that was essentially my trip in taiwan taiwan amazing little country i you know did all the touristy things you know got to play some pickleball uh and shoot the night markets and the food was awesome i don't think i had a bad meal there um would highly recommend and also it's just also kind of cool to talk to some of the pickleball players there and they're also very kind of um connected with some of the other southeast asian countries um and talking about how pickleball is developing over there so they have like a kind of like a game for pickleball for different countries like so india is in it and i think like thailand um they're trying to get more countries involved i'm sure you've seen articles of like china getting involved i know that they have dedicated pickleball courts now in vietnam um and when it comes to like 19 plus for like doubles and singles i think from what I understand, uh, India has, uh, you know, kind of has been dominating and they have like a huge okay. talent pool, but 35 plus, like all the Taiwanese players, at least from what I understand, have won a lot of some of the, like the intercontinental like kind of tournaments and events and it's only growing. So it's really cool to see and like, you know, to meet people who are just getting into the game and yeah. you know, seeing what kind of shots are possible and getting better. It's really cool to see. What did yeah. they play with over there? Paddles? Oh, paddle wise, okay. A lot of Yola, because okay. um, our Richard, the CEO and you know founder owner of Yola, he's he has some Taiwanese roots there. Ah, okay, uh, okay. He's of Taiwanese descent. I don't know if he was born or raised there, but um, I'm pretty sure he is of Taiwanese descent from what I remember. So you see a lot of Yola over there. I saw a few um, carbons, lunars, which I'm sure you've seen before. I've seen, but like I know about. I've seen them here and there. Um, there's a few other kind of like local brands and i'm trying to see what oh i saw i saw uh a few friday paddles there (laughs) did you nice yeah Yeah, i saw some friday paddles there and yeah but it's mostly yola lunar a local brand i saw some friday i saw like one dude had a carbon okay um and that's honestly all i can remember oh a few uh ronbus okay ronbus was there that's kind of cool yeah and I can't remember what else, but I would say Yola was the biggest one that I saw most people had. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, speaking of paddles, Tinder. you ready to chat about a bunch of paddles? Oh yeah, we got a we had a bunch to go through. Which what's first on the list? All right, I got to talk about the Hirache <laughs> X because that's probably going to be my first review back. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. pretty much I mean, done. I just you played with my it. script. Yeah, at, in Hawaii. And got double gold with it, which is the first time ever that I have like essentially switched to a paddle paddle. and then immediately won a tournament. Mm, Yeah, it's it's very good. I know you love it. I'm like, I I think it's good. I just don't think it's, I don't know, mind blowing or anything to me, but it's good. It's good. It's actually an interesting review for me to do because I really like this paddle, Mm -hmm. but it is not a... It's not like, oh my gosh, like the gearbox where it was like, this is like nothing we've ever seen. In fact, this is probably like a lot of paddles we've seen, seen, but just changed a little bit. So basically, the thing that makes it a little bit more interesting is that it has carbon fiber and fiberglass, which other paddles have done. That is not a new mm-hmm. concept. Yes. But the reason I ended up liking it so much is because it takes like one of my all-time favorite paddles, the double black diamond, and mm-hmm. they just made it elongated with a six-inch handle, and then uh, 
it's poppier and more powerful than a double black diamond, which by today's standards is getting a little bit more uh, like centric lower all, all court all control side. Yeah. yeah, not bad by any means, but this mm -hmm. one just gives you that little extra oomph out of it. So I just keep telling people, if you liked the double black diamond, but just wish it had more power and also had uh, was an elongated shape, this is your thing. But I have never picked up a paddle and been so comfortable with it immediately. Like that tournament uh -huh. was maybe my sixth session ever hitting with that paddle. Oh, okay. It's interesting that you say that it's more powerful than the double black diamond. I would say at least the one that I had, it yeah. felt it was in line with the double black diamond. I said, and honestly, I did come visit you and I played with yours and I felt like yours did hit like a little bit harder than the one that I have. So I don't know sure. if that's a, a variance or a variable, but it wasn't, it was, it was honestly very close. Like I would yeah. say it's still close to the DBD, but I don't know how much more powerful do you feel like it was? Now, it's DVD. not significant. It's just enough that I just like, I don't really know how to explain it. It was just like in a hands battle, I felt like I could get ahead easier. And on like an overhead, I was like, I have just a bit more that makes it like putting this ball away just a little bit easier, but it's not like gearbox level or even like full p blown power paddle. I would say it's like on the high end of an all court paddle. I see. I see. Also, yeah. do you know what Harache is? I feel like I saw people saying it was like a shoe. Maybe <laughs> it's a type of, yeah, it's a type of, it's a, it's a type of like sandal or shoe, which is uh, a very cool type of sandal shoe. It's kind of like this woven kind of almost like leathery looking type of shoe. You should look it up. It's either that or it's like a type of food. It might be both. I can't remember, but I think they might spell it differently. But okay. when I saw Harache, all I could think about was the shoe. And I was like, am I playing with the sandal? Like, why did he name it Harache? I was just curious. Also, yeah. just because I'm sure this confusion will happen. I, I swear it's, it's like they tried to make their whole lineup as confusing as they possibly oh, could gosh. because uh -huh. first of all the brand name no one is going to be able to remember it 11 six. because it's not even just the numbers it's 11 like one one okay. and then it's s-i-x six, six. two four <laughs> I, so i'm like dude no no one's gonna remember this Eleven but, six two four. Okay. so there's that which whatever they plenty of people have talked about the name i'm sure the owner's sick and tired of hearing about this name get ragged on but the paddles, they have the Harache X Control Plus is what I think it's called. And then they have the regular Harache, which is a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle. And then the Harache X Control Plus or whatever is thermoformed with the fiberglass and everything. So I'm like, now there's going to be people who like half heard what we said on the podcast. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go buy that Harache. And then it's just <laughs> completely the wrong one. The one oh, we're talking gosh. about. Is it's like 130 X. bucks. Okay. 140, okay, I think. I might have to do a paddle explainer, like lineup video for them. Just to you would probably make that pretty funny. You would be the man for the job. Okay. All right. Harachi, Get on it. To send, <laughs> send me the rest of the paddles. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. Next, Next one up was up. the Volare Forza Mach 2. Did you, yes. have you hit these or no? Yes. I've hit both of them kind of like before the break, kind of extensively, like for like a whole week. Yeah, and I give it oh, to other people cool. to hit too. Yeah, I really like it. I prefer the 14 millimeter. The 16 millimeter uh, feels a little softer, but like it doesn't mean that it's bad. Honestly, to me, they're very similar to Groovin's Movin 16S and 13S, which I like both of very much, except the Forza Mach 2s, I would say, uh, have more spin, more access sure. to spin. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, dude, they're solid. Uh, it's like a long handle, wide body. They have low swing weight. They're very stable. Um, yep. I really, I think like Volare like hit it at the park with the Forza Mach 2s. I really don't have anything bad to say about them, to be quite honest. No, I completely agree. I've played with both of them, and I really like using both of them a lot. In fact, there was a higher group of players that I play with. I would say I know it's definitely players out of my league, but like... I felt like I hung with them just fine, and I was playing with the Forza at that time. Like, is I actually think 
I'm curious to see if wide body paddles get more popular this year, specifically ones that have longer handles like the Volaire, yeah. because I feel like it gives people, especially amateurs, what they really need or want, which is a larger sweet spot because mm-hmm. the twist weight is so high. Yes. Um, and like, you know, you have more width to miss on. Long handle, you still do a two handed backhand if you want to do that. You don't have to. And then also, they're both super fast in the hand. So I'm like, right. is an extra half inch for a little <coughs> bit more power and a tiny bit more reach worth those other things? And when I think of like, three fives and below, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, sweet spot or like missing the center, even even at my level, like you're not hitting the center perfectly. So like what really matters to you? And I'm like, okay, half an inch, maybe I just need to move my feet more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I think that shape is gonna become much more popular. I know, uh, let's see, we had, I don't know, does Yola still make the Solaire? That's like a very similar shape. Um, yeah, and or I mean, even the Scorpius, like, oh, the Scorpius, is a very similar course. shape. It's essentially the same thing. Yeah, the Scorpius, the Moving Thirteen S, and this the Sixteen S. What about uh, what's called uh, Pickle? The you know the one that Tyra Black uses, right? Yeah, P I K K L. Yeah, P I K K L. They they have a shape. She uses a shape similar to that, right? Or am I? She wrong? does. No, okay. she does. It's not out yet for the public, but she is playing with with it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it's it's really good. Um, and I think if Anna Lee's paddle had been done in that same shape, I'm not saying it would have been wildly more popular, but like that paddle would be killer. It's already such a good paddle, but the main gripe I have is that the handle is just so it's darn too short. short. Dude, I'm telling you, that, that paddle, the Anna Lee Waters paddle tech, that thing has to be like top five most popular, powerful paddles out there. When I went to go see you and your buddy, uh, was it David yep. was playing with it? I was like, dude, these drives and these like flicks at the net are so fast. I was just like, what is going on? Dude, the thing's a cannon. I maybe when Christian Alshon's version comes out because it looks like they're mm-hmm. making an elongated version of the same yeah. paddle. He just I think to that's Paltec, right. That's what's going to make it more popular. I think because. I, I think they just needed one extra shape. And please, for the love of everything, don't make it in the same way that Catherine's oh, the elongated ring. one. I hated that shape so much. Oh, really? It I did not bad. like that. I, oh. I mean, it, I'm sure plenty of people liked it. I personally did not like it. Okay. But Fair enough. it's very good paddle. I mean, it's it's top paddle on the market without a doubt, if you can control it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, did You did a, a full review on it right no, no actually yeah oh. i it's probably one that i should do a review on and i feel like if christian has the 12 millimeter as well 12 and 14 i'll probably kind of clump it all into one review because it's it's definitely worth reviewing i mean i feel like gamma went from completely irrelevant you mean, you mean paddle tech er, yeah sorry that's Whoa. funny <laughs> that's freudian funny. slip <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the we'll get to we'll get to the gammas in a minute but the paddle tech it went from being completely irrelevant and junk, memes of pickleballs like dogging on them, to they have a really good paddle, but it's like nobody knows it. All right. Well, they know it now. You're welcome, Paddle Tech. We'll send you an invoice. <laughs> Next <laughs> Thanks up. Thanks for making a good paddle. <laughs> Next up, we got the Rockne Arrow Blade. I have not hit with this. I have no idea what that is. Please enlighten okay. us, Chris. L- let me, is it? Yeah, pull it out. My, let me go grab it really quick. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, we're back. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was fast. That was fast. It looks. Okay. Too bad your hands aren't that fast, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, we'll get to that because they did get faster while I was gone. But okay, uh-huh. this is the Rockney Arrow Blade. Uh, if you're watching Whoa. the video, you can see it. Okay, yes. so there's like these three holes in the throat, in the throat. and then you get these weights. They're rubber, uh-huh. and you just press them inside here. I'm not going to do it now because it's actually kind of difficult to do. And each of these weighs 0.5 ounces. And so, you know, it's supposed to add weight. The idea was probably change balance and twist weight. But, but. Can't change twist weight that much or balance that much. Balance, I don't know because I haven't checked yet. But the based on the spot it's in, probably not because it's like near the center of probably where the balance point is to begin with. But this paddle my model specifically with all the weights in it weighs 9.6 uh-huh. ounces sheesh 9. and are you 6. ready for the swing weight okay yeah 140 
No way. That has to be the, one of the highest swing weights you that have. That is, I think, the highest <laughs> stock paddle I have ever tested. What What is the next highest stock swing weight paddle? The new Franklins, tested? like 133. Oh, dang. Yo, those new Franklins are also hefty boys. So Yeah, they're super hefty. So I, I'm very curious <laughs> about this paddle. I think the concept was interesting, and it does do more than the metal bone did. So with all the weights okay. in. I was about to the, say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the twist weight does bone? jump like 0.4 which is pretty uh -huh. good the problem is and now keep in mind i haven't hit this yet so it mm. could be an amazing paddle i don't know the twist weight was like 5.7 with no weights with all of it in it's like 6.1 so it's like that that range is still not very good like that's yeah. on the lower end and i'm just like okay with all of them in i'm like 140 i'm like dude i'm gonna have to be like thor to swing this thing <laughs> the chosen and one and are you ready for this? This is uh -huh. the part that gets me. I didn't know this when I first posted an Instagram story. Okay. Do you know how much this paddle costs? Just take take a look at it. Uh, I'm okay with the holes with the thing. I'm gonna say two fifty, maybe two sixty. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> no. Three hundred dollars, and I'm like, okay, that is a big. I I, I, I mean, applaud them for good? trying something new. I, I don't know. I haven't hit it yet. I mean, I still have the plastic wrap on it. I actually meant to bring it the other day, and I just forgot it. But, dude, $300, like, I feel like not as many people are buying Labs products anymore, mostly because there's not been a lot of new stuff there. But also, like, it's just expensive, and there's a lot of yeah. great options for cheaper. Yes, exactly. I mean, that kind of uh, concept uh, is very similar to the uh, the new Gammas. That, yes. Yeah. Which I'll pull those up too. Yeah, the Gamma um, Airbender, yep. and they also have the new Obsidians with in a bunch of different thicknesses. Okay, so there you go. You have the Airbender 16. Yep. So it's very similar. So, but instead of three, um, I guess holes, kind just of like two. the Rockney. There's just two, but you can only replace the hole in the bottom one. So I can't imagine that doing. That probably does less than the Rockney. So I'd be curious um, to hit the Rockney. I'm going to guess, yes, that it would, just because there's three different holes that the Rockney has. But I will say I'm impressed with this one because it did change the paddle, the Gamma, a decent amount putting it in. So they have three different weights you can do. Yeah. One is 0 0.1 ounces, then 0 0.2, then 0 0.3. We did the heaviest one, and it felt pretty good in the paddle. And then also what's interesting, and I feel so bad because there's another company that did this first and they've been sending me stuff and I just <laughs> haven't gotten to it and I'm completely <laughs> blanking on their name. So I feel terrible, I'm so sorry. But anyways, Gamma and this other company have done something where you can take the butt cap off and then replace it with a weighted butt cap mm. and the Gamma ones go up to 0 0.3 ounces so that'll you know change the balance a bit. Honestly, I think that's something every paddle should come stock with. While I haven't hit it enough to know if it really changes much, it seems easy enough for everyone to do and like a solid enough idea to change balance. Um, or just add but some I will static weight. Yeah, add some it. static weight without like increasing your swing weight and it's not as annoying as putting lead in the handle. Yeah. But you had, wait, you hit this today, right? I did. I did hit that today, but I didn't replace them with the other weighted inserts i only hit it with the stock insert and yeah no it actually felt pretty good pretty solid for an edgeless paddle i thought it was very stable very maneuverable and uh you know decent power and pop it's i'd have to compare it but uh like to me it feels very similar to the lux control air maybe a little bit more solid yep. um but yeah these edgeless paddles are definitely getting better and the airbender is definitely one of the better edgeless paddles out there that i've hit you know in recent memory no i completely agree me and isaac both hit this and we had pretty much the exact same conclusion the lux is probably what we would compare it to most uh mm -hmm. we or at least i i guess i don't know about isaac i think it feels a little bit more solid than the lux um mm -hmm. like it's less not quite hollow. as yeah it's less hollow and i believe this is 16 yeah. millimeter yeah it is airbender 16 um so i don't know i feel like with what they did the problem is i don't know the price on this yet yeah i think if gamma did like 210 or 220 or less this paddle is actually a pretty good deal i'm not gonna say it's a bad deal at 250 because like the lux is fine it's just a little expensive but 
Mm -hmm. I feel like they could steal some market share if they did go a little bit lower. So I'm curious to see where it gets priced. But yeah, yeah, like I w I haven't checked the twist weight, but I'm sure it plays above whatever its twist weight is. That or they did some stuff to really make the edges, you know, yeah. more twist resistant. Right, right. And then the insert, I'm sure maybe it helps with the feel and the shock absorption, perhaps, you know? Yep. So, yeah, definitely going to play around with that more. Um, then last Gamma, one real quick before yeah. we go on. Uh, <clears throat> Gamma also has a new Obsidian 10 millimeter. They're going to do a 10 millimeter, 13 and 16. Yes. Did you I, hit the 10? I hit the 10. I didn't hit it with the 16 or the 13, but I hit with the 10. And the 10 is nice. It's very Dude. fast. And it yeah. like it goes. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like crazy powerful or like super poppy or anything, but it, there is some pop and some power to it. It just I just like the how maneuverable it is. But it's a good paddle for sure. Do you know? I, is it thermo? Is it thermoform? Unibody? Or no? I believe I believe it's thermo. I, I think all of them are. Okay. Well, there you go. Gamma is starting to make some some good paddles. There you go, dude. Yeah, I was genuinely impressed by this 10 millimeter one because i'm looking at it going like 10 millimeter i'm like this thing's gonna have no sweet spot it's gonna be really stiff like you know the one nice thing it'll have is that it'll be poppy or whatever uh -huh. but i i while i do think lead would definitely help some of the sweet spot it wasn't nearly as bad as i expected and yeah. it's so fast in the hand that like my favorite thing was just drilling hands with isaac and like yeah. when you nailed a counter like dude like it just it, it felt so good Oh, you about to hit him in the nutsack again? Is that what's about to happen? <laughs> that was that was with a different paddle. That was with a core I tech. Know. But I know. <laughs> you you could hit someone pretty well with this thing too. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel like what you would imagine a ten millimeter would feel or hit like you know. And I think that's like the thinnest core paddle I think I've seen. Is there like is there any? I thinner? I think there's been Maybe thinner the ones. I I think I've heard of as low as I, eight millimeter. Eight, yeah, I mean I guess Pro Kenix. Right. Yeah, it's at we least ten, can. if not lower. Yeah, um, and I think the power air is like eleven. I want to say thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, never mind. Okay, so yeah, no, it uh, that thing plays good. I do uh, like it a lot, and uh, yeah, it's just super fast. And also, one thing I really I noticed with the obsidians is that if you look at the handle. Right, mm -hmm. it starts to like get thicker as it goes up the handle. I feel like it's thinner at the bottom than it is at the throat. Or is that just me? Actually, I think you Feel might it. be right. Actually, like looking at it. Yeah, looking, feeling it. it feels. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think you <clears throat> might be right. Yeah, I thought. I just thought interesting. That was interesting. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, congrats, Gamma. I feel like they were kind of like Paddle Tech. They were just fading into oblivion. Now, what I will say is, I, this is not this one. The Obsidian. It's not like it's anything like groundbreaking like it's a thermoform 10 millimeter it's just because no one else has gone that thin but it definitely plays nice um step in the right direction the airbender i think is uh, well okay here what which one would you rather play with the 10 millimeter or the air that air Ooh, tough to say i think i would probably i think i might gravitate towards that 10 to be quite honest with you I, here's what I think would be the case for me. I think I have more fun with the 10, but I'm going to guess that I play better with play the better. Airbender. Yeah, I can see that. That might be the case for me as well. But when I played with it today, I was like, oh, okay. Like, this felt good. I could reset with it. But here's the thing. I didn't play. I, I this I need to play against high-level players. That's when I know. When I play with somebody yeah. who's clearly better than me, okay, then it's very clear to me, like, which paddle is better for me, which yep. one I do better with, right? So, But I yep. think I can get used to that 10. Yeah, just from hitting with it today. For sure. Yeah, so good job, Gamma. Those are kind of interesting. Now, another one that none of you have heard about, unless you're just super uh -huh. deep in the, the paddle nerd area, Cortec, Core T-E-K, uh -huh. very new company. Is uh, it? I thought it was a subsidiary of Paddle Tech. But. <laughs> That's what you might think. Okay. But very interesting paddles. Um, they're actually on the my shelf, so I'm not going to go grab those ones. But um, basically, what's interesting about them is the foam or the core, the polypropylene core is injected with foam. So like every single honeycomb cell is filled, is filled with foam. What kind and of foam do you know? I actually don't know off the top of my head. Okay. But it's filled with foam, and it plays quite interesting. They're definitely on the heavier side. I haven't checked swing weight, but yeah, they they're heavy boys. Right? 
Yeah, with yeah, the I mean, injected foam. foam. Yeah, yeah, and the whole entire face. Yeah, it has to be heavy. For sure. Okay. So I did play these, and now I will put one caveat in here. One of mine, the one I was using, may have had an issue. So I need to go hit the second one and see how it compares. So take what I'm about to say with a small grain of salt. But I hit this paddle, and this thing was minimum gearbox levels. Like, oh. I, I was, I played doubles today, and I was actually scared to take a full blown swing at a drive because I was so worried that if I hit someone and like they weren't ready for it, it would hurt. Like, I was hitting. 60 70 percent drives and people were still like you know they'd flinch a little bit and i was like oh my gosh like i'm doing nothing and i actually will put a clip on screen i <laughs> i hit a full-blown drive from the kitchen and just nailed my friend in the knee at the kitchen line like it just barely went over the net dropped and hit him in the knee which like okay i could do that with a drop if they decided to not swing at the ball but like this was a drive like this should have landed near the baseline with how i hit it Wow, so it gets good spin too then. Yes, but now this is where my caveat's gonna come in. So what I noticed was I could kind of like press in the face and there was a little bit of flex. And Ooh. then when I would press a little bit more, it wasn't core corruption. What I figured out what it was is the foam that was inside the uh, the core, like there was too much and it like pushed past a little bit. So it was like kind of pressing the face up. So. I'm not 100% sure if that one specifically would be passing deflection, but the other one I have, I checked and pressed into it. It's completely solid. I talked to the owner. He said, because they're still kind of new, they actually don't even have approval yet, but he said the paddles pass. Like he's just waiting for USAP to, you know, go through their whole thing. So I'm curious to hit the other one and see if it still hits as hard. But I, the one I hit today, I was like, good gosh. I, I don't. I don't know if I want more paddles like this in pickleball. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. The, it is like I wear I wear full time now, which we'll do a whole other episode on later. But I, if I was playing against two people with a paddle like this and they were a true banger, the yeah. game would genuinely not be fun for me anymore. Like I'm sure plenty of people are gonna be like, oh, like what a baby. Like they, they, yeah, just get good. But it like it's good. so fast, it's just not pickleball anymore. I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, you think so? Well, I mean, what's going to stop it, right? Like, who? <laughs> it, this this is just going to keep happening, right? More more companies will come out with paddles that are more powerful, or not. They'll come out with a model that is just as powerful as everything else because everybody has that. And then, you know, yep. I guess they'll let the people decide with their dollars on what they want to spend their money on. Yeah, I mean, maybe it will just become a thing where everyone gets used to it. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible to return these, but it is another level of speed to the point where if paddles like this keep being allowed to stay in play, I'm like, man, maybe EVA should just be allowed because these are basically hitting like an EVA foam paddle at this point, and at least those are quiet and hurt your elbow less. Oh, true. I didn't think about that, but that's, yeah. that's true. Well... Now, I guess, uh, I mean, if this becomes a thing, uh, the delineation between the different levels will be more clear. Like, you know, uh, yeah. can you can you handle the speed at yeah. like this level? Like, what, is this a four or five level speed? Can you handle it? If not, like, you know, you're relegated to playing 4.0 or 3.5 or whatever else. I think if, like, okay. I don't want to say things should be mandatory because I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, it shouldn't. But like I wear is mandatory in racquetball. If paddles consistently stayed at this speed and that's like just what we played with, mm -hmm. I would want I wear to be mandatory. Now, if you feel comfortable without it, whatever, like do your own thing. Yeah. But it would be so much easier to accidentally crank someone in the eye. Like in the time that I've been using this Cortec, mm -hmm. Patrick hit a counter, squared my brother right in the chin. Thankfully, he had some eyewear on. I used it. I I hit him in the nuts. And <laughs> it just like, I people were just body bagging each other with this paddle. Like, it's not hard to hit someone with it. And I think if you go down levels where you have a reckless person or someone's pissed and they decide to just yeah. crank a ball for the heck of it, like, I it's not worth it, man. I just, yeah, I don't know. I see eyewear becoming more of a thing. Maybe not yeah. mandatory, but I see more people accepting it. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, that makes so much sense. And 
also uh like you said there's some people who can be reckless or you, you know you don't mean to hit somebody or e- even if they don't mean to hit it that hard or try to like body bag you you know yep. these hits do happen and yep. if you're not a very like you know control centric player and you like just miss hit it somehow you could hurt somebody without even meaning to because there's so many yep. times i've seen that happen too like there's like an overhead or something or something like uh, like a shoulder level smash and somebody's they're trying to hit down it but they miss hit it and it kind of goes high and it hits like yep. their shoulder or close to their face and yep. yeah those moments are scary i mean you took i there's a video clip you sent me out like forever ago but you took an overhead to the face yeah <laughs> yeah the overhead to the face exactly i was like and- yeah, it was tough. I, I hit a roll today, actually. I just had too far of an Eastern uh, grip. I was probably, like, crossing into semi-Western, and yeah. I, like, went to hit a roll with the Cortec, and I squared my friend, and thankfully it was his cheek. He turned and hit him, but, like, Ooh. It, it that was when I started, like, slowing down with that paddle because I was like, dude, I'd never want to feel responsible for, like, injuring someone mm-hmm. significantly. You know, like, if, if I made someone lose their vision... I, I would feel terrible. Like, I would actually have a hard time playing pickleball. I could see that. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let's not talk about that. That's too sad. Next paddle. (laughs) Next paddle. Okay. Uh, Next paddle. The pickle. P-K-O-L-L. I don't even know what the name of this paddle. You know, I have it. Hold up. I was about to go grab it, too. That's funny. (laughs) I had it. Okay. This is it. This is P-K-O-O-L. I don't know what it's called. Do you know what this is called, Chris? I think it's called... The quiet two, that's what it's. Yeah, sh- I have shows no idea. I wasn't there's given this, a lot of info. There's also I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's this equation on like the paddle. I don't know somebody who knows math. Obviously not you, Chris, because you can't keep track of the score when the scores are subtracted <laughs> from you. Somebody tell me what this equation means. Or Kelson, Kelson, let me know. Kelson. So this is a paddle by our buddy. Oh well, my buddy. I don't know if you've met Kelson. I did. Yeah, I played yeah. played with the or like warmed up with him a little bit, I think, and then mm-hmm. in Maui. He, yeah, and he won five zero with that paddle, and his partner. Yes, dang, that's crazy. Yeah, K Dog, also known as K Dog, he's crazy. He's a he's a, a big wave surfer, super cool guy, super chill, and this man is like super athletic. But yeah, he sent me this paddle and this thing. Look at this thing; it's tiny. When he when I got this in the mail, I was like, dude, this is, is this a trainer paddle? He's like, no, bro, this is the actual paddle that he's playing with. And it's nuts. it's nuts. I and d- I'm just gonna tell you right now, there was a 13 year old in that in his bracket who was yeah. absolutely cracked. This kid is so good, and I promise you, in two years, <laughs> if he keeps playing, he's mm-hmm. gonna be a pro. Like was I was he playing with it. No, no, no. The kid was playing with a black ace, but he played against Kelson uh-huh. uh, with it, and I think they ended up playing each other in the final. So the first time they saw each other, Kelson <laughs> lost, but then Kelson got gold, and I believe he played them. So like this Whoa. kid was super good, and Kelson still won with what is effectively a trainer paddle. I think I know where I played this kid or when I went to Hawaii. Did he play with the white black ace? I believe it was, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think it's the same kid. Yes, he was very, very good. <laughs> like, Dude, he's so good. Yeah, his hands, his resets are like off the charts. But anyways. Yes. Dude, I'm playing with this, and I ch- I'm, I'm going to beat you with this paddle. I'm actually kind of nice with this paddle. Singles or doubles? Both. Doubles could happen because you could just target my partner, you know, and then I'll never see a ball. But singles, there's no way. Are you kidding me? What, what, like, dude, I'm playing against you. You're getting targeted all the freaking time. Just no. You like, want to? You want to bet lunch on this? Okay, we'll bet lunch on this. Okay, doubles all for right. sure. We'll bet lunch. What about singles? Tw- Twenty-five dollar cap on lunch. <laughs> okay, it's cheap, easy, easy money, easy money, guys. <laughs> We'll make this happen. We'll make this okay, happen. Okay, 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 okay. What about singles? Uh, si- no, singles Singles is the one I mean. Doubles, who knows what happens there. Singles oh, okay, is what okay. I think singles, I'll beat you in. You think... All right, we're doing this. Guys, let, let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments if you think I can beat Chris with this paddle in singles. We need to redo that video, that first video. We have to. Yeah, 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 I know. We will. We Maybe. we have to, for sure. It'd be so good. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I haven't hit that paddle yet. It's not really a high priority one of mine now yeah, but i do it's fun want to mess with it it's very fun at the very least i think it is a good like trainer paddle like you know kind of like the video you did a while back with the franklin trainer paddle with the like yep. you know but i think this is a better tr- like 
quote unquote trainer paddle because sure. the sweet spot and the length is more akin to what you find in a normal paddle where I feel like the trainer paddle, like it did have a long handle, but I feel like this, the hitting surface is kind of not exactly where the sweet spot of a regular you know, I actually think it is, be. if I really? recall. I think okay. it is, but the head is, I believe, even smaller. smaller than the pickle. It's smaller. It's like, yeah, it's shorter, right? Oh, it's like, can I rant really quick? Yes. Okay. I mean, this is your show. This is our show. You can do whatever you want. All right, perfect. I'm glad. <laughs> can companies please, please, uh-huh. please stop doing variations of the name Pickle for their brand? <laughs> I'm I'm so sick of it. There's P-C-K-L, P-I-K-K-L, P-K-O-L-L, and I believe I've seen other variations of the same name. Like, just let's just cut Pickle out of the name. (laughs) Like, how how do people expect me to remember all these different... Okay, let me rephrase. I will remember them because I do this. But if I'm a consumer, I'm like, P-K-O-L-L or P-I-K-K-L? Like, yeah, Why? I don't, they think they're being clever. Who knows? You know, but then you I, have to spell it out every single time. You know, exactly. Okay. If you go, go up to, to my someone website. and you're like, yeah, you're like, hey, my, my, you know, we're pickle.com. <laughs> so the first thing that they're going to do, they're going to go to P I C K L E.com. And they're like, yes. no, 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 sorry. And then they might accidentally go to P C K L.com. <laughs> but really, you're P K O L L.com. You know what's funny? Today, when I brought the P K O L. LL, the quiet two paddle to the court. People thought it was, oh, is this the same brand that Tyra is playing with? Somebody asked me that. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not. And I had to explain them. I think that's spelled P K K L, if I'm not mistaken. P I K K L. P oh my god, so it's P I K K L. See, look, you you do this thing you still didn't know. <clears throat> no, it's no, it's incredibly difficult. No, I agree. What's the other one? P C K L? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. I got one of them. Right. Woo. That's stuff. As soon as someone's gonna just do like PKL. There's somebody, <laughs> as we speak, someone is out there doing it right now. They're taking that domain right this second. <laughs> but yeah, I just had to rant about that because it's like this is this is just stupid. Like I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. We I think we have like one more paddle that I want to talk about, and it is the new paddles. They're approved. Um, and I double checked with the owner that I could kind of talk about, them, but is the Thrive Azul and the Thrive Blackout, um, both out power paddles. The Blackout is like a raw fiberglass paddle, but super powerful paddle. And then the Azul is raw, uh, raw carbon fiber Kevlar paddle, but it's like blue. And that thing, which is interesting to me about that is that it hits super hard and super dense, but it's it's like a power paddle because now like all the Kevlar carbon hybrids that we've seen, they all kind of play soft. They yeah. are more control centric, but this one is a power one. And I don't know. I don't know which one. I don't know if he's going to release both of them or he's still testing it out. Um, you know, the company's testing out like which one they're going to release, but those ones are ones to watch out for. I think those are probably in like the top, probably in my top five if, if and not definitely in the top 10 of like most powerful paddles out there i mean right the now. the blackout because i got to hit that as well uh-huh. is it the way i felt when using it was like a amped up black diamond it's like what i felt like the black diamond from six zero was supposed to be yes what it was like yeah supposed to be or what it was prior it it just comes off the face like really quick and yeah fast it's very like lively and dense is the feel like it just like feels thick yeah it feels yeah solid like you drop it and i feel like the ground is going to break not the paddle (laughs) that's what it feels like to me you know it just feels super yeah but it's but it's not that much like heavier and like the swing weight and the twist weight is you know the the swing weight is I feel like fairly like uh, respectable. Like 117 to 119. Yeah, which is you know pretty average, I would say. Um, uh, and then the twist weight is feels like pretty stable, pretty high up there as well. So, I mean, I'm excited for those who come out for you guys out there to like check that one out. But yeah, um, yeah, some good paddles. Any other paddles that you wanted to kind of go over? 
No, that's uh, pretty much it for me. I mean, there's definitely, since I've been gone, there's a lot of other paddles. I mean, Gearbox has the G2s. I haven't even touched yeah. the new Franklins yet. I there's haven't touched that, the Franklins. other paddles. Like, it's taking a month off, you definitely get behind. But I'm like, you know what? Like, we're just not going to get to everything this year. And that's just that's okay. what it is. That is yep. A-OK. -okay. But one thing I am going to start doing more of this year and... Uh, I wanted to do last year was I'm going to start cutting open paddles more. Um, oh, yeah. One saw, to verify. Right? I did buy a saw and I tested it today. Everything works great. Um, works awesome. So it, it's interesting because I already I cut open two paddles. I cut open a Vatic just because it was an extra one that I didn't need. And then mm -hmm. I cut open a Friday paddle because I also had two of those. The Friday was interesting. So I cut oh. into it uh -huh. and uh, I cut the handle off and the face off. The handle, okay, so most paddles that we see is when you, if you cut the handle off, you would see polypropylene going through. Mm -hmm. And then some paddles will also have the raw carbon or the face sheet run all the way through the handle. So it's a little bit more reinforced, like all the thermoform paddles. And then uh, you would have like the shaping pieces, like the wood or plastic or whatever to shape the handle. Mm -hmm. The Friday was different. The Friday had no polypropylene through the core, but it did have the face sheet that ran all the way through, and then it was filled with foam, and it was two different types of foam. There was a really soft foam in the center, and okay. then uh, uh, surrounded by that in all four spots was like this much more dense foam, then the face sheet, then the shaping piece. So it was very interesting. Um, right. So they have solid handles, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it's just different, different, to be honest. I mean, the Friday paddle is a great paddle, and I just, I when I cut it open, I was like, oh, that's not what I expected. Like, I only cut the handle off just for fun, not because I thought it would be interesting. You should definitely cut open the handles more because I feel like the handle is kind of where you kind of really see the quality of a paddle. If the handle is good, you know, yeah. I automatically think that that paddle is of a higher caliber even if it necessarily doesn't perform well i think the quality is just better so like other paddles with really good handles are speed up um i know john q did a review about them or talked about them in their video they have really good handles i took like the over wrap um off of them and they're solid i don't know if you played with them um, not much and uh let's see i guess the friday one that's interesting uh oh head has yeah some head has solid good handles Handle. Oh, I actually I played with some of their new paddles that came out and they're pretty good. Like okay. nothing like mind blowing, but they're super solid and I think they look pretty sweet. But yeah, they have good handles. And yeah, you should definitely cut out more. I feel like the handle is what sets, you know, you can see if companies are like taking shortcuts. Yeah, and that's also one of the reasons I want to do this because one, either I've had to take owners at face value, which is fine most of the time, but of course they're always gonna defend their own interests, so I wanna be able to check it myself. And then two, I was just thinking last year, like, okay, with all the core crushing that happened, had I just cut these paddles open, I could have figured out what was going on so much faster. Like we didn't really know that cores were crushed, or at least, let me rephrase, consumers did not really know that it was the core getting crushed until like March and beyond, or maybe even a little bit later. Like everyone was like, oh, it's the glue and the face is desponding. And then it was like, eventually we realized the cores were just annihilated so it's like okay well if i could have cut them open i would have known that sooner and then also i think it's good just to verify like if a company says they're doing something that when you cut it open you can see it for example engage says they do like foam in the paddle which they do technically do foam in the paddle but like a yola or like basically any thermoform paddle there is foam from like the handle all the way around the entire paddle the engage it's at like three and nine and it's such a small amount of foam that I'm like, does it even do anything? So it's stuff like that where I'm like, I just want to know what you guys are actually doing or that you're doing what you even claim you're doing. So yeah, that's just a plan of 2024. I want to be able to do that uh, more. Also just, I think it helps add some credibility to the reviews. So yeah, we'll try and do yeah. that a little bit moving forward. All right, cool. Well, moving forward, we're going to talk a little bit about something that we normally don't talk about and that's pickleball bags so yes some of you may know if you follow me and my channel uh, some of you may know that i went to minneapolis to see you and just because uh your brother was helping me out with a 
video, um, kind of like a commercial for a Kickstarter for a bag that I'm collaborating with a company called ADV. Uh, you can check my channel. I did uh, kind of an unboxing of it. And also if you checked out like part one of my like ADV video, there is like a small teaser in it. It's like a three minute video. You can kind of see some of the features of the bag. I'm pretty stoked about that. If you kind of want to learn more or be part of the email list, um, there'll probably be a link in the show notes. I'll give it to you and you can put it in the link in the description. Um, but I'm really excited about that. That's what I've kind of been working on the past couple of months is helping design uh, this bag. Um, I'm probably going to let you guys know right now. It's probably going to be kind of uh, pricey, but if you join this Kickstarter, you'll get a discount. Um, but yeah, just follow me if you want to learn more about the bag. I'll do like an overview of it before um, the Kickstarter kind of launches or around that time. It should be coming out in, I would say, about a month or so where you can kind of back the campaign. But yeah, super stoked about that. Yeah, you uh, you made me work on my month off. Hey, you wanted to work. Don't act like you didn't want to come and work. You're like, oh, yes, a camera. Mm, let me hit these buttons. Let me direct people and be a boss, you know? That's right. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, it was fun. It was fun to hang out. It was fun to work on the project. I, I, I really didn't do that much. I just helped on the day of the shoot. And then after that, I'm very hands off. Yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see the whole thing, the whole thing come to life. Um, I think, you know, having more high end bags will be nice. Uh, another one that I actually learned about like a week and a half, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, the court caddy from a company called Kitchen, and I believe yes. that's K-T-C-H-N. No yep. one likes their vowels. Everyone just wants <coughs> the vowels out of their company. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I was looking at their bag. Their bag is also pretty sick. And now I believe this bag is also going to be pretty expensive. I think yes. it's probably somewhere in the realm of like 300-ish dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not cheap. But looking at their Instagram and they've been in my Discord, yeah, I, I'm actually pretty impressed. While I don't know that it's the perfect bag for me, the like nerd in me that like kind of likes yes. some techie stuff, I'm like, this is a sick bag. Like they, there's some features in them that are pretty cool. It opens up kind of like a tongue style, you know, from the front, and then they have yep. the ball pockets on the side. Um, yep. Yeah, multiple paddle holds is more of a backpack style, like a medium, smaller to medium. My bag is kind of like on the larger side of things. Um, yep. uh, but yeah, no, I saw the bag and uh, I think it's a pretty sweet looking bag. Yeah, if you guys are interested in bags at all, you should you should check out their Instagram. I think it's just KTCHN Pickleball or PB. Um, mm -hmm. But look them up because there were just so many small things that I was like, wow, it's like that actually would be an amazing feature to have. Uh, but yeah, check them out. And then the other one I wanna talk about because I just got this in the mail and this yeah. is now gonna be my new bag. The okay. six zero bag. Now, I was not excited for this bag. There was really? a lot Why? of people that were super hyped, and you I kept it, seeing though. it. Yes. But here's why I wasn't excited. I kept seeing mock-ups, and it looked exactly like the carbon bag. In fact, the first mock-up I saw may mm -hmm. have been exactly the carbon bag. So I was like, which is what I use, and I love that bag. I think it's awesome. Yeah. So I was like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. They sent me one. And I checked it out and I was like, okay, yes, there are similarities to the carbon bag, mm -hmm. but it basically took all of the things, well, no, I don't want to say all, took a lot of things I liked about the carbon bag and then also improved things that I didn't really like about the carbon bag. Like what? M mainly, they made the bag way bigger. Like the center compartment, uh -huh. I maxed out the paddles, dude. Oh yeah, Actually, I can put I 17 paddles in this bag. 17 Who needs paddles. To put seven, the only, you're the only person that needs to put 17 paddles in a bag. I mean, I don't even need to put that many in there, but what it means is I can put at least eight in there and still have a butt ton of room for everything else that I could possibly need. I guess you can put your camera cubes in there and now- Exactly. Like, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm impressed. The The one knock I will give on the bag is that um, the interior is all black. Yes, and no, don't do that, guys. Oh my why? gosh. This is my biggest pet peeve. If they're like, yes, if your bag is like almost like 25 liters plus in capacity or like around 30, like do not have black interiors. It does not make sense. You can't see like where your stuff is. It's so bad. Yep. 
And if you just, it doesn't have to be like a crazy color, but like that's what the carbon does better. It's gray on the inside, so it's definitely easier to see, but do like white or like they have a pink six zero bag. You could have done the interior pink, pink which yeah. honestly kind of would have been pretty sick. Yes. Or dude, even imagine <clears throat> a six zero bag in the Jame colors, the purple. Ooh, that the would purple. Be nice. That would be pretty sick. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to say that my bag. Yeah, the insides are a bright color. There's like this lava color and this volt yep. yellow. And then for you guys that don't like a splash of color, um, the black one has a light gray interior, so you can see, you can actually see inside your bag. Because how many times have you know you've gone to play pickleball? You know, it gets late or you're at a tournament late and you're trying to find your keys, you're super tired yep. or whatever else, and you're trying to check to make sure you have all your belongings and you look inside your bag and it's dark and it's black inside your bag. You're looking to the void and you can't see anything. It's like, yes, it's it's a nightmare. It's annoying. Yep. Yeah. Also, so. I think the pockets are done a little bit better on the 6-0 bag. So they have a similar compartment area as the carbon on the outside with a lot of small pockets, but then they added pockets, three pockets, on the inside of the center compartment, which are quite large and can hold a lot. Okay. So I think that was just a good use of the space to add some extra pockets, because that was, when I looked at the bag first, I was like, oh, they have less pockets, that's annoying. And then when I looked at the inside, I was like, oh, oh. there's more pockets. So if you guys are looking for a big bag, because it's a big bag, like it's not small, like it's, the, it's bigger than the carbon bag. So like, yeah, it's a big boy, but for me, I love this bag. I'm definitely switching to it uh, just because it holds a lot more. It's not going to be for everyone, but I am a really big fan of it. I still think the carbon bag is great. If you don't need to carry as much as me, which probably 90% of you don't, the carbon bag is still great. I think they're the same price. So you can't really go wrong. It just depends on what you want. Yeah. More bags yeah. to come. Yeah, I think these bags are getting, like, paddles are getting better, bags are getting better, equipment's getting better. And now, like, you know, companies are starting to do, you know, pickleball specific shoes you know diadem just came out with a shoe i know selkirk yep. has a shoe in the works nike uh, released a shoe nike released one i knew new Balance granted i heard that shoe. it's not amazing but i mean it, they got to start somewhere right yeah <laughs> it's 120 bucks once i saw that i was like okay it's probably like it's probably not a, like a high-end nike shoe says the man who bought a bunch of shoes for like 40 bucks yeah but normally they're 140 they were on sale i got Dude. <laughs> How do you Actually, you okay, Ten? here's the worst. I own like 12, but you know what the worst part is? On my break, yeah. I was like, you know what I should do? Let's make mm -hmm. my life easier. Let's declutter the apartment. I was mm -hmm. like, this will make my life so much better, right? Yeah. I had a bunch of shoes of the heads that had holes in them, and I was saving them to do the warranty, but I was going to oh, do yeah, them all at once. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You know who threw out like four pairs of those <laughs> without thinking? Uh, yeah, this guy. You. This guy. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I felt like an absolute idiot. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, that was four months at least worth of shoes that you threw out. But yeah, yeah, that kind of sucked. So that was annoying. But okay, I I want to talk. We're going to get to your pro league thing, but I want to talk about the PPA really quick. Yeah, yeah, let's go over PPA. So the tournament that just happened, I didn't watch a ton of it this weekend, but I did catch uh, a handful of things. You know, I Me feel too. like more of the key moments. First... Jame beat Ben in singles. That was yep. very impressive. Yes, sir. Also, second tournament of this year now that Ben has not made a singles final. So, like, the draws mm -hmm. are, like, heating up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's tough now. These everybody, Everybody's getting so good. Like, you know, you got to, like, you know when, uh, I think, I don't know if it was Ben or Zane or whoever they were saying, they're like, people are going to specialize in, you know, yeah. certain events. Yeah. You're starting to kind of see that you can't do it all, you know, yeah. unless you're Annalie Waters on the women's side. <laughs> yeah, and then you can do whatever you want. Yeah, for now. For yeah, now. you could. You shake it out a one v two. She can add a one. <laughs> dude, that would be a kind of a sick exhibition match for Annalie Waters. It would. I don't. I don't feel like Annalie could actually do that if you did like two other top like Can uh, Catherine and like Anna. I don't think it would happen, but it would be cool to see anyways. Yeah, no, I I wouldn't want to see that. That'd be pretty sick. Yeah. Okay. Um, but okay, anyways, he beats Ben, uh, and then he also beats Jay DeVillier. Their match was insane. There were some crazy highlights from that. Yes, I saw Definitely that. worth watching. The pickup that he got was nutty. Dude, these singles games are just getting crazier and crazier. 
The athleticism in singles actually looks insane. If I go back and watch the first pro pickleball match I ever watched, which was like mm-hmm. U.S. Open, yeah, that was like 2019, us. Ben Johns versus Tyson. The athleticism's not even remotely the same. Yeah, I mean, speaking of athleticism, you see that um, uh, that highlight uh, in the finals <sighs> for singles. It From, was Xiaomi uh, and uh, Federico. Oh, dude, that's one of the best singles points ever done in pickleball. Yeah. Hands down. You, you I cannot. I mean, it show it on the screen. Fed, here's <laughs> the crazy the thing. To show it. Yeah. Federico was like that the whole match in game three. It was bananas. Oh, man. He really wanted that win. He's like, no, nah, you're not stealing this from me. Xiao Mei. You know what's really funny? In his what? post-match interview, I this made me chuckle so much. So Xiao Mei, the whole match is like mm-hmm. laughing. He's having, he's smiling ear to ear oh, the yeah. whole time. Even Sounds though he's like, like losing. Mei. Yeah. Yeah. Crowd wants him to win so bad. And uh-huh. Fed gets asked some question about, like, dude, how did you do it? And he was like, dude, he's basically like, I, dude, I don't even know. Like, I just couldn't even focus. And he's like, honestly, it's like the crowd wanted Jame to win so bad. And honestly, I think deep down, I wanted him to win too. <laughs> <laughs> clearly not <laughs> because yeah, clearly. Federico took it. And the way Federico was playing was. No, some of those gets were crazy. He should have lost that point like five times. Might Dude, have more. I couldn't believe it. I truly, if you you guys have to watch this when they post it, it is such a good singles match. Yeah. Or just find, find that clip. That, that one clip was crazy. We'll have to find it. We have to, we have to put that in the pod. Yes. So that was amazing. Now, one thing, this is big news that happened while we were gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, we kind of knew it was going to happen, but we, we haven't gotten to talk about it yet. Yeah. The new PPA ball, the Vulcan yes, ball. Yes, the Vulcan ball. Yes. Wait, have you have you played with it extensively? Oh, I've played with it. Yeah. Yeah. I've played with it. I bought them myself and paid yeah. 60 bucks for 12 balls, which is absolutely outrageous. Whoa. $5 a ball. Stupid. Okay. <laughs> First of all, these balls go out around real fast. It's stupid how fast they go out around. Honestly, they go out around faster than I think a Dura breaks. And I don't think I ever thought I would say this. But you man, I back. almost you wish want, the Dura was back. You want the Dura back. I, here, here's the thing. Somehow, this is what I feel like Vulcan did. Yeah. They said, okay, guys, what does everyone hate about the Dura? And they said, it breaks. It breaks. Yeah. And they said, yeah. okay, we can fix that. But it's going to go out around. Okay. And they said, what else do they hate about the Dura? It's a really expensive ball. No one likes paying three fifty a ball. They said, <laughs> we can make it more expensive. <laughs> People will love it. And because we sponsor the PPA, they have to use it just like the Dura. Uh, nah, I think uh, they they reached a tipping point. People people are like, nah, because now more than ever, like it's I, I see more people playing with different balls now out on the court. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Franklin is it's still insane. in play. Duras are still in play. Pro S one is still popular. I've been seeing the Diadem ball a lot as well. Uh, a little bit of the GB one. Like yeah, all the other Dude, balls are getting play. Even look at the leagues. PPA, Vulcan Ball, APP, yeah. Owl Ball, Duper, play with that. the Gamma mm-hmm. Chuck Ball. Oh, the Gamma Chuck Ball. I haven't played with that, but I did get some in. I want to test that it, out. And there's probably other random leagues using another different ball. We're going to have to play with like four or five different balls. Like, okay, I realize we used to complain about the Franklin and the Dura, and I think there were a lot of complaints justified. However, uh-huh. at least it was as simple as Dura Summer, Franklin Winter or APP Franklin PPA Dura. Now it's like, oh, what ball are we using? I'm going to have to go buy eight different types of balls and one of them costs $5 a ball. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of annoying. But- Impressive that they made this worse. <laughs> and you want to know how we know it's worse than a Dura? How? The amount of matches, pro matches of the PPA, where the pros in the middle of the match would say, nope, I'm done with this ball. <laughs> New ball. And then swap it. Unbelievable! You basically never saw that with the Dura. Like either the ball cracked, or maybe every once in a blue moon they would swap it out. But like two times in a match they would swap it, or three points into a match they'd be like, "Nope, I want a new ball." Actually, I think Christian did that. They always do a new ball every game. Like three or four points into a match, Christian was like, "Nope, I need another one." Dang! Unbelievable! And it makes the Instagram story I made even funnier when this ball came out and I bought them. Yeah. I said, can Vulcan possibly make a ball as bad as their paddles? <laughs> and I was I was mostly joking. I like it was just to, like just to be kind of funny. I 
actually think they made it worse. Oh my gosh. I like, I haven't had that much time with it. I think I hit with it like once or twice when I saw you and that's about it. Even funnier to me is PPA or just like all these different places keep like trying to say like, oh, the pros love the ball. And then they're asking to swap it out or you can see them angry on court. And then I think I saw on Facebook that some people were saying like they were talking to the pros and they were like, yeah, if you ask any of these pros off air what they think of this ball, they hate it. <laughs> now, I'm sure some of them like it. I'm not saying all of them don't like it. But I think if you just watch their matches and look at the reaction to this ball, it's pretty clear that people aren't happy about it. I, I heard um, from our you know, fellow pros that after the first event, uh, they would just go up to Jay, Jay DeVille, and he's like, dude, why does your ball suck? <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, that's what I heard. They would all just be <laughs> clowning on Jay. I don't know what Jay said, but that's what I heard. I just thought that was hilarious. That's pretty funny. Oh, I, real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Well, I don't know. Finish what you're about to say. I want to go to like quickly one other topic. Okay. I was just going to say, even amateurs are complaining. Like, So it's <clears throat> by some miracle, it's warm enough that we can play pickleball outside of Minnesota right now. It's like 40 to 50 degrees, which is and there's no snow. Absolutely unheard of. I've literally never seen this in my life. Yeah. So that's crazy. But we've been playing outside and we played like four games and the ball, like you could literally drop the ball and see it shoot off in random directions. Like, you know how you bounce the ball on the ground before you serve? Yeah. Yeah. It would just start like even <clears throat> here's how, this is when I knew it was bad. Sarah, my wife, who plays pickleball, but doesn't play that much. Yeah. She was doing it and asked me, she's like, is something wrong with this ball? She has never <laughs> once asked me ever if something's wrong with a ball. So wow. if she knows, it's bad. Oh, bad, real bad. Michael Jackson. Shoot. Okay. You know what else is bad? I don't what? know if they changed the rules, but remember you heard about the first PPA where they had the new serving rule? Yeah. What'd you think about that? Oh, it looked like an absolute dumpster fire. Ben, you could see, was getting angry about it because he got called several faults. Yeah, Jack Sock got called several falls. Uh, did they change it back? Please tell me they changed it back. I actually, I haven't heard anything about them doing it. And the way I saw some people serving, I was under the impression that it was still not. But I don't know that for a fact. Can you believe, like, we went from, you know, spinning in your hand, the chainsaw, that being to illegal to now... <laughs> like yeah, yeah the like smallest badly. movement even even if the ball goes sideways like if you dropped it and it went sideways and then down like that's a that fall. it's it's so stupid because like the ball is going to naturally kind of go up because in your serving motion you drop like let's say you're right-handed right when you're doing a serving motion you drop your right shoulder right that's just part of you know the human physiology you drop your right shoulder so you can get under the ball and you can like do a swing so when your right shoulder drops your left shoulder naturally picks up a little bit so then like the ball kind of goes up a little bit so like how do you, you enforce that it's so if it the oh first tournament God. there were so many faults so many faults i think they said there was some stat on the pickleball.com instagram that said there was like 74 faults called in the qualifier alone or something what the yeah. frick that is absurd why yeah it's crazy please tell me they change it back because now like come on it was all pickleball already was you know like some someone's still like being disrespected and like a laughing stock like could you imagine like somebody new turning in or someone who doesn't like like pickleball already hate it and they saw this happen like we'd <laughs> we'd be made fun of even more like it's so yeah. bad change it back or uh, i feel like uh, this, to be honest, this year, if this keeps going we have to do drop serve and then i yeah exactly i feel like if you're gonna do this like you might as well just go drop serve and just like make it super easy there's no like because the problem with this one is they say you have to drop it below your waist well like while it's more obvious than what was happening before i still feel like it's a little difficult to like know exactly if they're doing that so I don't know. I don't completely hate it, but I think it complicated. You should have get, given it several tournaments instead of like, oh, hey, we're going to do this on the first tournament of the year. Oh, also, it's like a slam. So, like, this one's important. Oh, so stupid. I, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I was when I heard about it, I was legitimately pissed off. Like, I've never been That's so, so funny because it affects you zero. <laughs> Exactly. It affects me zero, but I was so upset for whatever reason. I was like, we went from like banning the chainsaw and the spin serve 
to this this is what you decide to change and for what like this is what i fought for yeah (laughs) so funny gosh let him okay well okay beyond that don't have too much other than that the Kawamotos <laughs> almost beat Catherine and Anna Lee. This was such a heartbreaker. They yeah. were up in the third game like 8-1, then 9-3, and then Catherine and Anna just went on an absolute tear, and they ended up winning 11-9. I felt so bad for the Kawamoto sisters. I thought we were finally about to see them get beat, but we it's, did not. So, nope. Come back. So that come was unfortunate. Training, you know, when you're behind, I've told you the momentum matters. It know? does. It does. Well, I mean, they're they're getting close. I think you know we haven't seen this much shakeup, you know, this much drama in the pro pickleball yep. space in a while. So, I mean, if this is a sign for things to come, it's exciting times, you know. Yeah. Unless- ben and Anna Lee also almost got beaten mixed twice on the way to the final. I think I watched one of them, and I'm completely blanking on who they played. But yeah, they were like with the conditions. I think it was really windy. They. There was this tournament could have had a lot of insane shakeups. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe the next one. Um, yeah. Last thing about PPA, you and I, we watched that episode one, Ben Johns, like who is Ben Johns, little documentary. If I don't know, guys, if you haven't watched it yet, don't. It's not worth your time. <laughs> oh my! I wasn't that bad. The only okay. if. If you're a filmmaker, I think there are a lot of things that you watch and you go, okay, there's a lot of flaws with this. But if you're like an average person, you probably will not have the qualms that either you or I had. Okay, you're right. We're being really picky here. But also at the same time, unless you're completely new to the game and don't know who Ben Johns is, it's not worth the watch because they didn't teach you or tell you anything new about him that you probably didn't know before. And That's fair. The Yeah. And it was boring. I will say we had what four or five of us watching this and okay like not one of us in the room cared listen okay I wasn't gonna post this but I'm gonna post it now okay I have a video of me interviewing Ben Johns and I asked him some some random ass questions like what kind of cheese he likes okay you'll get more out of that than watching this first episode that the PPA put out okay (laughs) I wasn't gonna put it because it was so bad. I, it was like very last minute. Ben didn't even want to do it. We were in like some office, and I was like, "Whatever, I'm gonna toss in the camera and a mic." I was not prepared. I had like 30 minutes to prepare some random ass questions, but I'm gonna post it up now because that PPA one was like really just just didn't Here, give okay. any value. Because some people are probably gonna be curious. They're like, "What? What are they so mad about?" Yeah, there was just really two things that I thought were extraordinarily funny. It was. The way that Colin and Ben's interviews were shot. Colin's was shot so wide that it just looked like an interrogation (laughs) of Colin. Yeah. Like in an empty apartment. And then Ben's was shot on a messy, his bed is not made. The sheet is barely attached to the bed. And then like, (laughs) was there like like a Chipotle Chipotle floor on the front? Yeah. A (laughs) bowl. Yeah, a bowl. Yeah, I think think so. Chipotle bowl on the floor. Yeah. It was, yeah, I just, I don't know. It was, I felt like they, PPA has so much footage that I was surprised they didn't use more. Now, here's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll say. Well, I was not particularly impressed with the first one. And I feel like the story that you and I told of Zane's MLP was significantly more compelling. Way better. Here's what I will say. This is a big step in the right direction, and if they're going to do this on more players and they learn from this one Mm -hmm. and they continue to learn how to tell the story better and stuff that will be more interesting or drive stories of why you should care about certain players when you're watching them and follow them through more tournaments, I think that will be extremely good for pickleball because that's why we did the Zane doc Mm -hmm. was originally for a while I thought that's what I wanted to do in pickleball was tell these stories, and then I kind of realized that's not really where I wanted to go. It will help the sport a lot. So props to PPA for doing that, but there's a lot you could do better from your first one. Yes. Chris is very optimistic. Good job, Chris. You're, PPA, you're welcome. Chris is so nice. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> I feel like things have tended to get better over the years, so I feel like the docu-series will, will also continue to get better. I just would have thought if that's the first one you're putting out, you would have, like, 
it you know kind of and it's Ben. It's like your number one goaded player. Star. Yeah, exactly. I would have thought you would have you know went all out for episode one. At least use some extra B roll. Yeah, they really needed to the be matches. more B roll. Yeah, they used the same clips like twice. You could tell. Like they didn't even try and make. Yeah, it look yeah, that was kind of weird. I was like, you guys have so much footage. Why are you using? Like, and I I know it was shot from like a year ago. This is so, true. You know, it, like it's old, but still, I was like, I don't know. There's a lot more. Yeah, and I mean, whatever that, it doesn't matter. That project <laughs> could have been spearheaded by different people, and maybe it was passed along. So it, maybe the person who started it wasn't the person who finished it. So maybe the yeah. person who started had, you know, different ambitions, and who knows yeah. what. There's a lot we don't know, but yeah, I know I'm pretty pretty right. harsh on it. To yeah, you just coming first pod, and you're just coming back firing shots. Yeah, shoot, yeah, exactly. With somebody's, you know, we got you and me, yin and yang. You know what I'm saying? You're in focus. I'm out of focus. You know what I'm saying? We gotta. <laughs> Keep up with things. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay. There's like two more things uh, we'll go over, and then we'll wrap this first pod back. But you are doing – I don't know if you guys are actually calling it a pro league or what you're calling it, but you want to talk about this? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it is the OPP Oklahoma Premier Pickleball League, and we are kind of – mirroring it um trying to make it similar to how arizona is doing it at the orchard tuesday nights you know they have a lot of good players in arizona you know our good buddy kyle kazuda michael lloyd um i think lauren mercado patrick kaka there, there's a bunch of really good players that play in that and those guys are like professional level players and there's a chance for them to kind of play for their um neighborhoods or their towns within the greater phoenix metropolitan area and they play against each other week to week and it culminates in like a season finale championship style and we're trying to do something similar to that but in oklahoma and it is being spearheaded by jenna hessert and uh chris hayworth you might know jenna she plays pro and you might have heard of chris hayworth he's a player from okc he beat ben johns at nationals and he also made it pretty far in this recent tournament, I think he beat um, Connor Garnett. I think he just lost to Jay Devillier before Jay went to go play Xiaomi, I want to say. Mm. Um, so they're playing in it. And uh, right now we only have four teams. We're trying to get it two guys, two girls. Uh, play four matches, kind of like Major League Pickleball. But we play side out scoring one game to 15, win by two. There is a dream breaker. And there's only four teams right now. And Jenna, um, you know, bless her heart, she's awesome. And she invited me. Like she sent me an invitation, it's invite only, like to play on a team, and I was like, "You want me? Like, like, all right. Like, I would say I'm good at this game, but I'm not that that good at this game." But she invited. You're me to telling play. me that being friends with me wasn't an automatic disqualification? Because <laughs> yeah, that's well, what I would have thought. I would have thought they're like, "Yeah, no, like yeah. that guy definitely <laughs> brought your duper down." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm surprised as well. You know, maybe you know, she doesn't speak three five. Uh, but she, so you know, she hears about those names and those names just are blank in her. Like if your duper is not above a certain level, like you know, it goes in, in one ear. Doesn't translate. Yeah. Doesn't translate, right? You might be speaking another language. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, we played it. It's being streamed. We had the first uh, night is we play every Monday night, and we had the first night last. Uh, Monday, but we're supposed to start it two Mondays ago, but we had like ice storm here, so we couldn't do it. So we packed everything into one night and like, it was like great in terms of the people who came through, like people, like local people can come through and watch the game. Um, but I guess streaming wise, uh, there's some hiccups, you know, it's our first night trying to figure it all out. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I got the chance to play you know, some really high level players. It felt like I was a little nervous. And honestly, it was, I, I came back from Minnesota. I was visiting you. I was doing the commercial with you and your brother. And then I flew back at like 1 p.m. And then I showered and everything. And I had like two hours to rest. And at four o'clock, no, 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 I hang on. Drive. You got to tell this better because people are going to be confused. You what? left Minnesota at 4 a.m. and you got back home at 1 p.m. Yes, that is correct. Yes. And then had to play at 6 p.m. And then I had to play at 6 p.m. It was rough. I lost my all my matches. Did you? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I lost all my matches. The first one, I think I lost like 15-10. And the second one, oh, my gosh, we had the game. I think we had, we had like maybe like 
opportunities like four opportunities to finish off the game but then we ended up losing i want to say like 17 15 or something like that oh just, ouch yeah we could i could have taken a dream breaker but i don't think i would have survived i was so tired but um yeah i'm excited to see kind of where it goes we're trying to just be grassroots we're trying to grow it and there is you know some ambitions to create you know teams that are kind of base in cities like we want to have one here in tulsa one in oklahoma city jenna's already talking to like some players i think in dallas wichita kansas to kind of start their own and we can start cool. having like cities versus cities and these can be tryouts and i don't know state versus state like you know i think it's really cool whereas you know like ppa app majorly pickable like that is fostering a professional league and atmosphere like top down whereas this oklahoma pro league and then also um you know in arizona like that is like fostering a community and competitive environment from the bottom up and mm. maybe somewhere along the way we join f forces we get to play each other create exhibitions i don't know you shoot you should start one in minneapolis you got i think i figured it out yeah i figured out why you got invited why it's because they, they knew you'd talk about it on the pod and blow it up a little bit. It wasn't hey. for the skills. They wanted your reach, Will. They wanted your reach. Even <laughs> though you even I, though you're short and have no reach, you have big <laughs> influence reach. Okay, I guess you know what? You might be right. That was a big big brain play by Jenna. Well played. <laughs> well played. She got you good. She got you good. Now you go back to her and you say, Look, I want some royalties on this thing. <laughs> Every team want... that starts up, I want fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah. i won't fall for this trick if i get asked then i know it's because it was it was okay. rich okay okay fair enough unless you start it yourself you should just start it yourself you have the players and the reach you could totally do it and you have the know-how to stream it and make it good and everything man it would be i'm not gonna lie it would be really fun if like the minnesota team played your team and like in some other world where i'm actually that good at pickleball uh -huh. and my team beat yours that's definitely not happening. Dude, if our teams played, I'd be hiring like another buddy, filmmaker buddy of mine to film the whole thing and Isaac just so we have all the coverage. <laughs> and then if I won, I'd make the biggest edit ever. Okay, okay. Well, yo, we can still... Th that. Why can't that, that universe, that timeline be this one? It, I mean, it could be. It could be. With some of my goals moving forward this year, it might be possible, but... Okay, all right. Let's end this know. pod with, with the goals that you have for this Which, year, for 2024. I, you know, this is how I know we're new to being back. Uh, I didn't plan out a kitchen, but we're going to say that this is the kitchen. So congrats on making it to the kitchen. Yes, sir. Oh, I rewind. <laughs> that was my rewind noise. All right. Back to when I was talking about Todd from Hawaii, who was the guy that was like, hey, Chris, you're sandbagging. And like, I like the pot or whatever. This is another thing that made me laugh. We're warming up. And he's like, man. I just hope I make it to the kitchen this match. And he was referencing the pod where, you know, oh, where I was like, so you and I was like, I was like, man, this guy might be the biggest podcast fan. I was, it, it warmed my heart. Cause I was like, wow, <laughs> somebody like gets it. They get all our jokes and they find it like they're in on it. I like genuinely, I was like, wow, this is cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Warms your heart. I mean, so so much warmth that it warmed Minnesota this season, this winter season. Dude, so, yeah. seriously, I came back and brought the warmth with me. Yeah, that's right. Whew. Okay, well, get dumped on. <laughs> like, like, hit, hit it's me with so some goals. warm. <laughs> uh, okay, so goals for this year. Uh, I think I'm content going... or playing, either, whatever you have goals for. Okay, I am. I think I'm going to play in. I want. I want to win a 5-0 tournament. I think I, t I talked about this like before. Um, so I want to win a 5-0 tournament. I want to also gold in doubles. I have not like had gold, like won a gold in doubles for like the longest. I don't think, and now that I think about it, I don't know if ever I've medaled, but I've never got gold. 4-5, uh, I don't even know if I've gotten 4-0, 5-0. I don't know. I need more practice uh, for that. Also, I'm not gonna i guess i don't know how the points will work in the uh, opp the oklahoma premier pickleball league but you know i did go train like today i actually drove to okc like an hour and a half just so i could go drill and train with some of 
you know, the top players in my league right now. Because I'm definitely like in the bottom half. Cream of the crap. Is how <laughs> Cream I of the crap. Cream of the crap. <laughs> that's that's you funny. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> so that's like, I guess, playing wise, um, I do want to play at least one more pro qualifier, at least for singles. I don't know about doubles, but just to just to do it. I was about to say, I was like, this guy hasn't even ever gotten a golden. He just talked about wanting to win 5-0 and suddenly he's going to the pro qualifier. Hey, let's go. <laughs> pro qualifier just to, to, it's just to play. I'm not going to say I'm winning it. I'm just saying I want to <laughs> do it. That's all. What you got to say, what your goal needs to be is make it out of the pro qualifier. Make it out of the pro qualifier. Okay, so make I would it. be the loudest fan in the stands if you made oh, yeah? it out of the pro qualifier. If you played really? Ben first round, uh-huh. I'd be yelling. Uh, yeah, I would you'd pay. I would buy VIP. Me? I would buy VIP seats for that. You, oh, you'd have signs up there, like okay, yeah, <laughs> just to see me get hundred percent squashed and pickled. O and O. I'd like watch you serve into the net, and I would say, "That's my three five. <laughs> I taught him that. I taught yeah, him, I taught him, him that. that. That's my move. <laughs> That's, That's my funny. move, guys. <laughs> That's so uh, funny. That's hilarious. That's great. Um. That uh, I am going to, I guess, content-wise, uh, I'm going to, like, develop more, I guess, systems in place just to be more consistent. Uh, I have been pumping out more content, but they're still, it's still kind of, like, sporadic. I don't have, like, a solid kind of schedule. I just really want to recapture my time back. So, like, kind of similar to how you've done it, like, the last half of 2023, where it's, like, in the morning, you go, what was it? You go hit or you go train? Right. And then, uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing this year. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, it really just a more regimented schedule to follow. Yeah. And, um, like learning how to take breaks, like throughout my day, like, cause you know, you and I know we can kind of like work through the night. It's so easy to do, yeah. but like have hard stops, you know, because it's so important. We, we really felt, I, I know you and I, like, you know, we don't talk about it on the pod and stuff, but after hours, like we felt the burnout, you know, yeah. and it was rough. That that paddle awards video last year that like that I wrapped up on almost didn't happen. Like I was definitely at my like peak your uh, limit. It's not that I wasn't enjoying like pickleball or anything. Like it's it unless you've gone through this, it's really hard to express what it feels like. But everything just felt like it was two times harder or took two times longer to do at the end of the year. Like and it was. I just, I, I really don't know how to explain it. Like, I'm yeah. sure it just sounds like complaining, but still love the job. Super, I'm extremely blessed yeah. to be able to do it. Like, amazing. I would not trade it for anything. But yeah, break was massively yeah. necessary. Yes, yes. Um, last thing before we go on to your goals, I think I'm, I'm going to try a, a lot harder this year to diversify kind of like the content that I put out a little bit more. Most of it has been you know, paddle reviews, Uh, I'm going to change that up just a little bit, you know, do more comparisons, explainers, I'm still going to do pros versus Joes. Um, I have a few kind of lined up a little bit, I just need to schedule them out. But I do have a few lined up. But I also want to do just a tad bit more like teaching content that I have some ideas with a different perspective of. And then uh, just more behind the scenes, like lifestyle, a little bit like with pickleball still involved obviously because i feel like you know just looking at paddles at least for me has become kind of bland i don't know if that is for you but i mean i don't know at this point you've kind of established yourself as the go-to like paddle review guy but i imagine that you know you have other interests aside of just nerding out about paddles i mean i definitely am going to do some different content this year but paddles are pretty much always going to be my focus at least for the foreseeable future. I I really like doing it. The only thing that's probably gotten a little bit more annoying is in the last four or five, six months. Uh Like there's a lot of repeat and like overlapping paddles that aren't that interesting. I think we're about to get out of that cycle and into some more interesting stuff. So I'll be a little bit more selective about some paddle reviews this year, but like that is absolutely still gonna be the the bread and butter, the main focus. But there's some other stuff that I just wanna dabble with. Like one of my goals this year, is and I didn't do a good job of this last year is I want to make training pickleball just for my own fun like getting better at the game more of a priority and one of the ways we're doing that is my brother he worked for me last year but he was a contractor he wasn't full time now he's full time for me and 
last year it was hard to find people to hit with in the middle of the day yeah. uh, when now I you know. needed it. I now, every single day at one o'clock, Monday through Friday, me and my brother are hitting on the courts, and that's for two reasons. One, so I can test paddles more frequently and get paddle reviews done quicker. And then two, also just for the sake of training. Like, that's just like part of the job, need to train, need to get better. Um, I really want that to be a thing because I will say that when I got to drill on my break, it, I, I, it's not even that I got like drastically better, but there were just things that I was like, oh man, like I actually got to work on this and I could see the improvement and it felt really good and like made me excited, especially because I took a lesson with one of our pros here. Mm -hmm. And that's actually some of the content I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some more lessons with some pros and post the content from that because my lesson on counters, first of all, it was amazingly helpful for me. And I was like, okay, if it was helpful for me, probably helpful for a lot of other people. So I was like, I'm gonna turn this into a video. Um, so yeah, definitely some different content for me. I'm working on a vlog right now. I've been filming like, what does an average week of like being at the Pickleball studio look like? So I think that'll be kind of fun. Sick. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think just my goals are, I wanna get better at pickleball. I'd like to win a 5-0 tournament this year since ideally that's what I'll mostly be playing. Um, and then, you know, just keep on cranking with the paddle reviews. Uh, I will definitely not be as strict about making sure we do a pot every week. That's the goal, but I'm not gonna beat myself up over it this year. Yes. Yeah. Just don't need to do that. Yeah, exactly. Although people will be upset if they, they miss a pot from us on a week. But well, we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll figure something. We'll as long as Will something. doesn't take a bunch of trips this year and leave me doing some solo pods. True. I am trying to actually travel a little bit less this year, at least for tournaments. I'm trying to just go to more local events and just, mm -hmm. you know, be more mindful and be more present within my own local, like, pickleball community. And it's just, when each time you travel, I know you feel this too, but, like, it takes a huge dent into kind of, like, your flow and your workflow. Yes. The things that you're supposed to do. Massive. And, massive like you're tired it's expensive and then if you don't get stuff done then you come back you're tired and then you're trying to crank stuff out to try and catch up and it's very stressful actually one of the things that i'm doing right now uh that i didn't do last year it was really hard was i'm actually probably not going to post my first review back until i have like four or five videos already made so that way when i travel i am always ahead like i am like five weeks in the queue worth of videos. And actually, you and I have a trip coming up soon uh, with John and Brayden. <laughs> That's gonna yeah. be a lot of fun. I'm really That's looking forward to that. sick. I can't wait for that. Uh, yeah, we totally forgot to talk about that. But we will, you'll, you'll hear probably more about it in the next pod. John did mention about it in his podcast. But yeah, yeah, we are coming together, you know, to fight evil. I'm just kidding. No, we're not. We're just going to have some fun, make some content, test out paddles. It's going to be a good time. I've, all four of us have never been like in, in the, the same, same room, room together. Yeah. Actually, I've never met Brandon in person. So same. I don't know. Okay. I'm excited. It's it's going to be sick. I'm like actually, battle again. of the paddle reviewers. Let's go. It, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier where like I want to meet more people. Obviously, I've met you and John, but like I haven't gotten to spend a lot of time with John. So I'm just yeah. looking forward to like, People that I know I will get along with or like I've talked to, it's just gonna be fun. I don't know. I just Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to this year. It's gonna be a good okay. year, Will. It is gonna be a good year. All right. Well that's about all I got. You got anything else? This is a long pod. Nope. That's pretty much all I got. It's good to be back. We missed you guys. Uh yeah. we're excited for this year. And uh I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah. Peace. Later. Yeah.